Shut up and sit down. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Shed. This is the place where we discuss true crime right from my she shed. But today I'm actually in my house and I just took a picture of my she shed because it's cold outside. This is Wacky World Wednesday. So we're going to discuss a crime that is really weird and this one nailed it. It is a cult that became a group of serial killers. They ended up killing 11 people before they were caught. This case is almost too weird to believe. So, come on in my murder shed to join me in this weird World Wednesday case. It's such a disgrace that I can't see your lovely face. But we can always just pretend you're at my place and not in cyberspace. Yep, I snuck another rhyme in there for you. I know it was really bad, but they always are. But seriously, just smash that like and subscribe button. You don't want to miss any true crime cases. Okay, there are several individuals that are involved in these cases. So I will try to make it less confusing by showing pictures as we go. This murder cult makes Charles Manson and his cult look like amateurs. I'm going to give you a warning here. There is graphic descriptions of murder in this case. Okay, here we go. I'm assuming if you're okay with this, you're still here. Well, this story begins in Krugersdorp, Africa. Today, we're going to do a case right out of Africa. I think it's maybe the first case I've done out of Africa. This starts with a very unusual woman who came from parents who are very religious. And they went to a church called Full Gospel Church. Cecilia Stein was born on December 22nd, 1980 to parents Payette and Mara Brand. Cecilia's twin died at birth. Mara did have a daughter from a previous relationship named Louisa. Cecilia was expelled from school when she was just 14 because she was accused of being involved in cultism. Her parents sent her to a second school well, she got expelled there as well. So she pretty much just quit school altogether. Her parents never believed she was involved in occultism. Cecilia was married to a Romanian, but the marriage did not last because they just basically got married in order for him to get a green card. Her second marriage in 2003 was to Andres Dryas, he was a police officer, and they ended up having two children together, one son and one daughter. In 2007, Cecilia started receiving counseling from a woman named Rhea. Rhea started an organization called Overcomers Through Christ, and this organization specialized in helping individuals that were involved in cults and Satanism. She actually at one point joined the police station social crime prevention unit. She assisted the police with investigations that involved cults, among them ritualistic murders committed by Satanists. Rhea would often go to churches and speak about Satanism. And that's how this all came about. Because it was through her overcomers through Christ that she had at a church that she met Cecilia. When Rhea met Cecilia, she thought Cecilia seemed hurt and broken. Cecilia had reminded her of herself when she was younger and had so much pain and trauma in her life. Someone had saved her once when she was younger, and now she wanted to play that role in Cecilia's life. It would soon become a strange relationship. Cecilia seemed to have the skill of getting people to believe everything she said. And Rhea soon became brainwashed into believing Cecilia's wild stories. And they are wild. Cecilia would tell Rhea that her husband abused her. And then she began to tell her that her whole entire family was involved in the cult. 
and was intent on killing her. She said her father's name was actually Mr. Brand, and he was an evil high priest in the Satanist church, and that Mara was not even her real mother, that this woman known as Elise was actually her real mother, and Elise was a witch with the satanic bloodline. That's how Cecilia felt that she had become a witch was through her mother, Elise. And Cecilia even had a collection of 479 knives she had behind her door. And here's a picture of them. In fact, her half-sister, Louisa, had given her a knife that she carried around with her all the time. For some reason, she had a really big fascination with knives which is really weird when you learn the rest of the story. Cecilia even claimed her bloodline traced back all the way to Ramsey II, the Egyptian pharaoh who had ruled in the 13th century. According to Cecilia, she was a 42nd generation witch. Okay. She also claimed her father, Mr. Bran, had been torturing her since birth. He even made a soundproof room so that when he tortured her, no one could hear the screams that would come from the room. And he apparently had all kinds of devices in which he tortured her. And he had tortured her in all kinds of ways, according to Cecilia. He said he did this because it would make her a more powerful Satanist and stronger witch. She claimed to have supernatural powers and could attack people without even touching them. She could also read minds. And to top it off, she could morph into a vampire and a werewolf. Wow, she had all kinds of powers, didn't she? Cecilia would also boast that she could travel all over the world by leaving her body. She said before she had left Satanism, she was also the bride of Satan. And the witches were always trying to rope her back in to be Satan's wife again. She even claimed one night when she was having sex with her husband that her father, Mr. Brand, entered into her husband's body and he abused and raped her. Then she ended up banning her husband from their bedroom for this reason. Rhea felt that Cecilia needed her protection from her family and from the cult pulling her back in. So, Rhea basically believed every word she said. Talk about gullible. One day, Rhea came racing over when she learned that Cecilia's whole back was covered in red welts done to her by her father. Cecilia even showed Rhea her son's hands that was covered in blisters, claiming that her father had pressed his hands onto a hot stove plate because she had refused to come back into the cult. The overcomers would often have meetings they would call high night. Basically, they performed exorcisms on Cecilia, where she would look like she went into these convulsions. And later, it was learned that Cecilia actually took a needle and drew blood out of her body and got a rubber glove in tore the fingertip off, put the blood inside the fingertip, tied a knot on the end, would stick these into her mouth, and then she would end up, during supposed this exorcism, would bite into that glove, and blood would come squirting out of her mouth, proving that she was demon-possessed, they said. This is when two people who should have never found each other came into each other's lives. Miranda Stein, whose last name is the same as Cecilia's, only by coincidence, Miranda started helping Rhea and the Overcomers through Christ program. And this is when Miranda and Cecilia met each other. Miranda had two children from her first marriage. The boy's name is Larox, and the girl's name is Marcel. Around the same time as Miranda started attending the meetings, a young couple started as well, and their name was Zach and Michaela Valentine. I told you guys there's going to be a lot of names thrown in there. There's a lot involved in this. 
Now, Rhea, she had a mentor by the name of Reginald Ben Dixon, a retired pastor who was helping her start a new course for the overcomers through Christ meetings. Due to her spending so much time with Reginald working on the course, Cecilia became super jealous of their time together. And then Rhea suddenly started receiving text messages from the so-called witches of the satanic church. But actually, the messages were from Cecilia pretending to be the witches. Go figure. The whole time that Cecilia and Rhea had known each other, Cecilia said Rhea was her spiritual mother. And Cecilia, who claimed to have multiple personality disorders, one of her personalities was a child named Anja. And Anja, when she was upset, she would run to Rhea, and Rhea would often embrace her. And so she just came like a spiritual mother to Rhea. So that when they began to split up, Cecilia was so hurt and really mad at Rhea. Rhea and Cecilia became further apart from each other. Cecilia started hanging out with Miranda more. And Miranda and Cecilia ended up having an intimate relationship. And Cecilia started cheating on her husband. And Miranda even had her 14-year-old daughter, Marcel, move in with Cecilia in order to slave after Cecilia and her two kids. Marcel hated it, and she begged her mom not to do it, but she made her do it anyway. Miranda also made both of her children so dedicated to Cecilia that they were not allowed friends or any extracurricular activities. Rhea also would not allow Cecilia to go into any more of the Overcomers to Christ meetings. She knew that Cecilia was telling lots of lies. She kind of figured something was weird about the whole situation. Took enough time, don't you think? So Cecilia decided to start her own group called Electus Perdeus, which is Latin for chosen by God. After starting the group, or cult, that she said was a group that the church knew about, but the church did not know she started a new course. So Cecilia started taking tithe up, and she said all the money was going to the church in order to be given to an orphanage, which was not true because Cecilia was pocketing all the money. And the members got so into this new group that they, all of them got a tattoo of Electus Perdeus on their different body parts. It seems like Cecilia could brainwash anyone because just like Charles Manson, they pretty much did whatever she asked. It didn't matter what. So the members of Cecilia's group was Miranda, her son, Larox her daughter, Marcel, the young couple, Zach and Michaela Valentine, and a man named John Barner. A woman named Natasha Berger was also in this group at one time, but when Rhea split from the group, she went with Rhea and started going to her group. And because this happened, this made Cecilia really angry at Natasha. She had a horrible anger. Not only for Rhea, but Natasha as well. She hated her pretty much. One night, Cecilia told her cult that she had a vision that Natasha was dead and there was blood all over her. So they made a first plan to kill Natasha. But this first plan actually failed. They had 14-year-old Marcel go to Natasha's front door and knock. She said, can I go get my cat? It's in the backyard. Well, in order to get backyard, she's going to have to walk through the house. And Natasha refused to let her in. She didn't remember even knowing this girl. So, because she was so careful about how she let people in, they had to come up with a second plan. 
this is where I'm going to let you know again. It does get graphic from here. So, you can always stop the video and watch something else on my channel. All right, here we go. While Cecilia is the leader of the cult and makes all the decisions, Miranda became the mastermind. They end up making a decision to send Zach and his wife, Michaela, to Natasha's neighbor's house in order to lure Natasha over there since she was careful about letting anybody into her house. And their plan occurred on July 26, 2012. When the couple knocked on Natasha's neighbor's door, the older lady's name was Joy. She, when she answered the door, Zach told her that they were friends with Natasha and they were wanting to surprise her with a gift. And so, at that time, Natasha smiles at Joy and lifts up a gift bag which she is carrying. And so, Joy said, yeah, come on in. Um, make yourself at home. And she said, I'll go pour you some tea. So, when she had her back turned to Zach and Michaela, Zach pulled out the gift bag, a knife. And then, when Joy turns back around, he forced Poor Joy to write a letter to Natasha so they could hang it on Natasha's front door before she got home from work. He told Joy the letter needed to say for Natasha to come over to Joy's house ASAP. Then Zach told his wife Michaela that Cecilia said that she had to actually murder Joy. Poor Joy is trembling violently at this point. Michaela looks at her, and she's crying and trembling, and Michaela just can't do it. So she runs out of the house and goes and gets in the car. During this time, Joy tries to make a run for it, running toward her bedroom door, but Zach is just too fast. He catches her and then stabs her in the neck six times, then grabs a hammer I'm not sure if he pulled that out of the bag, too. That is weird stuff. Of all the things you could bring to a crime, a hammer, pretty rough stuff. Then he grabs his hammer and repeatedly hits her with it. After all this, he finishes her off by slitting her throat. Her little Mounties pup, Bubbles, was even covered in Joy's blood. So sad, but he didn't kill the little pup, in case you're wondering. He stuck it in a closet and shut the door. Somehow, with Joy's last breath, she was able to call an emergency number. So she started to drag herself out of the bedroom door because she wanted to warn Natasha about what was going to happen. But Joy died right at her bedroom door. In just a moment after Joy draws her last breath, Natasha knocks on the door. As soon as Zach opens the door, he grabs Natasha and repeatedly swings a hammer at her before pulling his knife out. But Natasha puts up a good fight. But as she is fighting, her hands and arms get all slashed up. But Zach was still able to stab her multiple times in the head, neck, and throat and finished her off with a cut to her throat, just like he did Joy. Something that's super sad, and I will show you a picture, is when they found Natasha's body. In her hand was the crumpled letter that Joy had wrote. Here's a picture. A neighbor hears all the screams. And she happens to look out and she sees the couple fleeing. And so she thought that was quite strange. So she actually walked over to Joy's. The door was cracked, which was strange too. And she just peeked around and she seen Natasha's bloody body lying there right by the doorway. And so she started screaming and ended up running away and calling police. As Zach is driving back, he calls the cult to inform them it was done. He just wanted to make Cecilia happy, and she was happy. 
but not at Michaela. She was mad at Michaela because she didn't do her part of the job. And Rhea became the prime suspect in her friend's murder. Only a week after the murder, Cecilia began to plot her new plan of revenge. This time on Reginald, the retired pastor that had mentored Rhea. He just looks like a sweet older dude. Cecilia decided to send Miranda along with Zach, and Marcel was forced to go as well by her mother. When they got to the security gate in front of Reginald's house, Miranda called him on an untraceable cell phone. They pretended to be detectives, questioning him about the other two murders. He did come and open his security gate for them. And as they were all walking back to the house, Miranda talking to him and telling him that they were going to ask him questions. But when he got close to the front door, this is when Zach took out an axe and with the blunt end hit Reginald repeatedly. And after he fell on the ground from the axe attacks, Miranda stabbed him with a knife 13 times, even lifting his shirt to take better aim. 14-year-old Marcel stood back in horror as she watched the horrific attack on this older man by her mother. Can you imagine seeing her mother doing something like that? Wow. Later that evening, Reginald's wife would walk up on this horrifying scene where she continued to scream until she was heard by neighbors who then called the police. And Rhea again became the prime suspect. This time she did hire a lawyer. The next person to be murdered would end up being an individual from their own cult. Can you guess which one of them? All right, guys, unfortunately, I have to make this a two-parter because it ended up being so long. And I'm actually still involved in researching this. So I went ahead and split it up into two videos. And you guys have a blessed day. And I hope you have a wonderful beginning to your week. And uh, I will see you in a few days when I release the second part of this video. Just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are so sweet. And I will see you next time. Come back and see me at the Murder She Shed.